probably don't think about bees until they sting you. Well, now is the time to care because our bees are under attack from an international intruder, putting the country's food chain at risk. This is worse than COVID. Yeah. Worse than COVID? Just how can that be? It's incredible that one in three mouthfuls uh, of food that Australians eat is pollinated and helped by honeybees. Varroa won't kill you, but not eating will do it as well. It just mm. takes longer. The far-reaching impact of an industry in crisis. At the moment, we need to put this in the butt. This is commercial beekeeper Ben Brown at 4 a.m. This is him six hours later. He's too distraught to give us an interview. Because Ben's hives are being destroyed by government biosecurity teams. In this exclusive vision captured by a current affair, biologists scoop up hundreds of thousands of Ben's bees to test for the deadly Varroa parasite. Swarms clinging to their tormentors to avoid being bagged. We don't really want to hop out because there's a lot of angry bees out there. What's more alarming is that this operation was happening 20 k's outside the original bee lockdown zone. That suggests the mites are on the march. We wouldn't find out for sure for another 48 hours. Now, if the results come back positive, then these hives over here will be the next dominoes to fall in an industry on the brink of collapse. Which is what happened. Brown's hives in Calga, a smack bang in the middle of a new emergency red zone ring fenced by authorities. His hives will now be destroyed. Yeah, it's carpet bombing. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. In order to save the village, we had to destroy it. So in order to save the bees, we had to destroy them completely. Roland. Yeah, this is as close as I can get. And partner Sharon, own honey producer Castle Inman. If we'd been just over there, we would have actually been outside of the zone. By over. the shed, you yeah. would have been outside the zone. Yes, that's yeah. right. But uh, that's how close it was for us. They can only touch their hives to test for the parasite. So you don't know if you've got mites in those hives or not? No, we don't know. No. We don't know for sure. The couple took part in a tense meeting between desperate bee farmers and New South Wales Department of Industry. The plan has been around for years. What is the plan? The plan? Destroy hives with petrol, fire and poison. Dave, did you get the answers you were after? No, I think you're as weak as piss. And I've tested my bees and there's no mite at the moment, so I'm just wondering why have I got to eradicate my bees? We really don't know what's coming next. We don't, we don't know what it's going to look like. We don't know what it's going to feel like. I think there are um, a lot of broken hearts walking out of here tonight because it, it's people's livelihood. It's, it's, it's a love thing. It, it's a relationship with our bees and we're losing it. This isn't just about bees and people's livelihoods. It's about how the mass destruction of hives will hit your back pocket and whether this pending disaster could have been prevented. Hives like these should be part of a 300,000 strong contingent heading to the Riverina to pollinate almond trees. But the sudden bee lockdown of thousands of hives in affected areas means it won't just be almond crops suffering. Many of the nice things in life, one might argue all of them, depend on bees. All of your stone fruits, uh, your um, chips at McDonald's depend on bees. So it's pretty easy to think, oh, we don't really need them. You know, I'll be, I'll be fine. I'll just, I'll just still have my chocolate. Oh, sorry, that's gone. I'll have my peas and beans. No, that's gone. Rock melon, gone. Uh, pumpkins, gone. Squashes, gone. Uh, coffee, yeah, yeah, okay, mm -hmm. gone. You know, people are blowing up about $12 lettuces right now. Yes. Well, there won't be lettuce, so... <laughs> Forget about lettuce. So don't have to worry, don't have to worry about <laughs> it being $12. That. That's, <laughs> that's gone. <laughs> the biggest question now is how the f*** they got here. It's the billion-dollar question. 
Until now, Australia was the only honey-producing country varroa-free. The New South Wales Department of Industry admits it doesn't know exactly when the parasite entered the country. It's hugely upsetting that this has happened. Yeah. Bigger GM Matt Gray's overseen the successful early varroa detection system called Purple Hives. Artificial intelligence technology finds mites on bees and sends immediate alerts to remove infected hives. Project boss Joel Kupperholtz says purple hives are crucial in protecting Victoria's honey industry. We've had a really successful 12-month program down here in Victoria and, you know, we've now explored, you know, Newcastle due to their three incursions in the past that they got on top of. You know, so we're rolling this out as quickly as we can humanly do. Given this technology was launched a year ago, it begs the question, why weren't purple hives placed near Newcastle port where the mites are thought to have entered Australia? Oh, that's a chronic failure of government. And it's not just state government, it's federal government as well. Because quarantine is a federal government responsibility. If the Varroa horse is bolted, like COVID, we've just got to live with it. This is what living with mites looks like. They're built in vents in the bottom of the hive. So the mite falls through. We will still be able to eat honey, but fewer bees means there will be less of it. And as sure as a sting from these important insects, there'll be fewer beekeepers around as well. How much more expensive are these type of hives compared to the current ones? They're 20% more expensive. 20%, yeah. So again, added cost. Added cost. Yeah. And so if you're right on that borderline of yeah. making money, they can tip you over the edge. Yeah. But you've got no choice because the mites here. We contacted the DPI for comment, but never heard back.